Welcome to the video. Today I'll be talking about referencing game objects, which is a area where a lot of new devs struggle. Uh, so hopefully I can remove some of the guesswork. I see a lot of new devs doing these like weird and wonderful tricks to reference their objects. Well, not wonderful, they're disgusting. Uh, so I'll show you what you should really not be doing and then I'll show you what you should be doing and hopefully you'll see the light. So. I've just got a unit manager here. Now I'm using a unit manager. This could be anything that spawns objects, right? It could be on the UI, you could be spawning buttons, you could be uh, like a weapon shelf, whatever. Okay, I'm just using a unit manager. All I've got here is a reference to a game object, my unit prefab, so that we can start spawning objects. So first things first, I'll just show you some uh, bad ways to reference game objects. So here we've got game object find. Now, if you're a new dev, you're probably almost certainly doing this. Uh, this will search the entire hierarchy for the object called character. Now, computers are fast as hell, okay? So if you've got like 10 or even 50 objects, this is still gonna be like blazingly fast, even though people will tell you it's slow. Uh, but really it's a bad way to do it. It's, it's, it's messy, okay? And the other ways that I'm about to show you are significantly faster. Same with find object with tag. Uh, it's just not a good way to do things. This one here, um, actually this is incorrect. I copy and pasted it from the web. Uh, let's just say unit, right? Uh, find objects with type. This is one that I do occasionally use, all right? So th this one does have its rare use case, uh, but still you should avoid it if you can do so. So uh, I'll get rid of these puppies and let's start uh, spawning objects. So let's create a spawned obj and this will just be instantiating our unit prefab. So that will obviously spawn the object and we'll see that right here. Cool, it's spawn the object. Uh, but now let's say we want to do something with this uh, spawned object here in the update loop. Right, so we need to store a reference to it. So we can do that simply by doing this. Okay, so now we've created the private reference of that and we can just come here and we can say uh, spawned object dot transform position equals random uh, inside a unit sphere. So then heading back to Unity and pressing play, <laughs> chaos, but uh, it's doing what we need. So now we've got this, uh, we've spawned this object and now we've got a reference to it and we can use it whenever the hell we want in this class. But what if it's not just a game object, right? Like what if we've got this unit here and we've got this unit script? Okay, so, uh, and let's say on the unit, uh, we've got a public int level uh, variable or something, right? And we wanna actually grab and do something with this level. So what I see new devs doing all the time is they store it as the game object and then later on when they need something on the hero, they'll do something like um, spawned object dot get, get component and they'll grab the unit and then like they've got access to the level. Uh, but this is a backwards as hell way to do it. As unit is a derived from mono behavior, you can simply store it, the prefab as a unit and your saved variable as a unit, right? So now this spawned, spawned object is, is the unit. You can just say spawned object level, right? So little tip, I remember when I first began, I used to store them as game objects until I realized, oh, wait a second, uh, I'm an idiot. And then I started storing them as those, but uh, I feel like it's a, it's a mistake that every new dev uh, makes. And just remember now that we're actually storing uh, units here and not game objects, we'll have to redo the reference here. So let's just pull that in. Cool. Uh, so that's good for one unit. What if you're wanting to store a bunch of units, right? So let's make a private list unit. And let's say units, and we'll just actually initialize this straight away just to save time. And down here we'll go four, and we'll do 10 iterations, and we'll go units.add, instantiate, unit prefab. Cool. So now we've got a list of all of our units, um, which means we can actually do something with them in update loop. So let's do a for each loop here, units, unit. And what we'll do is we'll actually take that. So this is gonna be true chaos. I don't know what this is gonna look like. <laughs> Just one, one big shape. Um, yeah, so now we've got references to all of our uh, units there. Excellent, but what if we want to access these uh, units from an external class? Let's say we've got a, uh, something like a map manager here, but this could be anything you want, right? Uh, and we wanna grab our units and do something here. Let's say we want to actually move our units uh, in the map manager. 
for whatever reason. So we have a few choices. With the unit manager, say a whole bunch of things are wanting to access it. If that's the case, we could make it a static instance by making it a public static unit manager instance. And then uh, down here a bit in our awake, we could set instance equals to this. Um, and if you don't know what a static class is, uh, basically it's just going to give us access across our entire code base to this instance here. So what's happening is unit manager is being created normally, right? And then as soon as it starts, it's setting itself to this global static instance. So now over in our map manager, we can do something like unit manager dot instance and uh, we're not actually exposing anything yet as both of these are private. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we could make this list here public, right? We could make this public and let's just rename that to better suit the public convention. So then here we can say units, right? Uh, unit, no, that's meant to be units. It's a list, cool. So now we've got access to our units here and we could uh, do this. like that, and that would work fine. But this is bad design because uh, this class here is what's managing our units, right? We don't want another class to be able to, for example, come here and say units equals new list, do we? And like completely screw up what the hell the unit manager was doing. Uh, so what we can do is instead of making this public, let's actually return this to private, cool. So let's leave that as is. We could do a few things here to, to expose it. We could say public list unit, and we could call this units, and it just returns units, right? So this is now a providing a read-only list here. So I wouldn't be able to do this now, equals new list, okay? Because it's gonna say uh, there's no setter available. So an alternate way to do this, and uh, in my opinion, preferable, is we can delete that. Let's make this public again and rename this to units. And now we can actually turn this into a uh, getter with a private setter. So we can just go get and we'll have a private set. Um, and this will be exactly the same as those two lines effectively. So here uh, it'll still work the same. We can't set to it, but we can in fact read it, uh, the, the units from the, from the list. And by the way, this here is the same as like just defaulting it. Uh, I like to actually to explicitly have it there. So just to demonstrate, um, no, we don't have a, a map manager. So map manager and put the map manager on. Now you'll see awake will be called, the instance will be set. Map manager will now be able to access all of those units. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is good in the scenario where a whole bunch of different classes are gonna be accessing it. But what if that's not the case? What if you wanna keep it a little bit more locked down, right? Well, we can use something like a constructor for that and actually send in this reference. So if you've only been programming inside Unity, you probably haven't seen or used constructors all that much. So let's just say we've got a public class, we'll call this R class. In here, let's have a property. This will be a string of name. And then we'll also make a constructor uh, which will take in a string name. And then in here we'll set name equals name. And this is just an example of a constructor if you didn't actually know. So we would say R class equals new, R class. And then in here we could say like tarot dev. And that would now feed in this into our constructor and it's basically just setting up our class. So constructors are just a way to initialize something with a default value, uh, a, a default set of values and uh, just set up the class in general, right? In Unity with game objects, we don't actually have access to a constructor because we're not constructing it ourselves. We're actually calling instantiate and uh, Unity does a whole bunch of stuff on the C++ side, actually spawns the object um, and they, they would call their own constructors and stuff, right? So yeah, we don't get the actual constructor, but what we can do is create our own little constructors, pseudo constructors. Uh, so in here, we would have, we can't use the actual real constructor as Unity will throw a fit, but what we can do is we can say public void, and I like to call mine uh, init. Uh, and now here, so instead of uh, creating a static instance, we could actually give this unit direct access to our unit manager by doing something like this, unit manager, uh, manager, and then manager equals manager, right? So we're saving, we're saving this instance on our class. 
And now here in our unit manager, when we're actually spawning our object, so let's just grab that and go var unit equals this, and then unit dot net, right? And we're sending in our unit manager. So we're actually passing the reference into them. And then we'll actually add it to the list. So now uh, our unit has access to this manager, but let's just assume this isn't here. It's still locked down, right? We're still locking down the unit manager. Only the things that really need it have access to it. So then for example, later on here, um, we could report to the unit manager that we're moving to another waypoint or uh, if we just died, we can actually report to the unit manager, hey, we died, uh, clean us up, remove us from the list. Something like that. So that's two good ways to reference objects between scripts. Uh, one way is if it's massively accessed by a whole bunch of different classes. And another way is to keep it nice and um, nice and kind of like locked away, just passing the, the, the reference to the exact things that need it. Um, I do wanna show you one more thing. On the unit, let's say we're doing some collision detection. So uh, on collision, enter, right? And let's say we're looking for other units. So if we're running into another unit, we know that it's a unit, right? Because let's say we're doing some uh, we're doing some checks here. We're saying if collision compare tag oh, game object compare tag is on the unit tag or or whatever. So we're doing those checks, um, but we don't actually know what scripts are going to be on this unit. So let's just assume we're using composition. So some units will have uh, a script which will be like um, explode on touch. Another one might have heal on touch or whatever. So let's actually do that. Let's create a script here called uh, heal on touch. So then in here, say we only want to run specific logic if the other unit has heal on touch. So what we could do is we could say if uh, collision game object try get component and then in here we can use the out keyword and it will be heal on touch heal on hot cool so now what this function is going to do is it's going to return true or false if it actually if the other script was actually found on this unit okay and it's going to give it to us uh as an argument using the out keyword. So we're checking to see if it's got it. If it does, then this will run. And then like, you know, heal on touch may have some function called uh, uh, public void heal unit, something, something, something. So then we can uh, go hot dot heal unit or something, you know? So that's a really nice way to do it. Um, you've probably done it something like this before. Uh, heal on touch and then you'll do something like collision transform get component heal on touch and then you do something like if h does not equal null then let's do this uh, but yeah this is just a much nicer way to do it um, also uh, the other day i completely forgot that this even existed but uh, i accidentally tabbed it out uh, what was it uh, game object dot send message right? I forgot this existed. Uh, and it, probably because it's so horrible. If you're using send message, stop immediately. It's not slow or anything. I actually benchmarked it. It's actually insanely fast, but yeah, just don't use it. Uh, this is faster and it's also cleaner and it gives you, uh, you know, type safety and stuff instead of you having to do something like this. Uh, yeah, just stop using send message. There's literally never a reason for you to use send message. But yeah, that's it. So uh, if you're a new dev, hopefully this uh, cut some corners for you and filled in some gaps. Uh, if you're an old dev, this probably bored the absolute shit out of you. Uh, but yeah, like the video, subscribe. If you're feeling generous and want to support me, go over and become a tarot bro on my Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.